is On Air with Tony Sweet, your number one source for all things entertainment, exclusive interviews, and guests from TV, film, the Broadway stage, and your favorite musical artists of today. Talking shop is a given, but deep conversation is Tony's specialty. On Air with Tony Sweet starts now, exclusively on UBN Radio. Okay. It is a beautiful day here in Los Angeles, and I have to say one reason it's beautiful, because I have a beautiful girl in a, ha- in a house, you know, and besides me. Uh, so, <laughs> How presumptuous of Right, me. right, right. Yeah. Always <laughs> about you, Brittany. Always about you. Uh, so I'm Tony Sweet, the host, of course, of Honor with Tony Sweet, and we have a very special guest uh, for the third season of The Magicians. And, and um, in fact, my sister was part of a magician act back when I was a kid, so oh. you know, I'm going to find out a little bit more about her background. But, hey. but we have Brittany Curran here hey. in the house from Magicians, Miss Finn. <laughs> yes, Miss Finn. And I love the green because it makes you look like a, almost like a fairy. Oh. Yeah. That's so appropriate for yeah. our show. I, that's what I think. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, uh, well, thank you so much for being here. This is a, a very exciting for me because, like I said, I'm a big fan of mysteries and fantasies and magicians and me stuff too. like that. So uh, before we get started on the, the actual show, because, you know, that's the boring part to me. <laughs> really, I just I want to know the person. I want to know the person behind how they get, get to the where they're at today. So... I see that you're from the East Coast. I am, yeah. Now, were you born in a uh, a family of uh, uh, actors and actresses, or no? Was this kind of a... No, I was born in a family of teachers and ministers. Oh, oh hallelujah. So, <laughs> yeah, so I just took a complete right, right turn. Right, right. Um, no, I was the first person... I mean, there was a lot of musical people in my family, right. um, but I am the first one in the Curran clan to uh, to break into the film industry. Nice. And so what is Curran... What is that background? Is Curran is like a... It's Irish. Oh, and I and he got the green on. Oh, yeah. I'm totally representing yeah. my Irish roots right now. Yeah, I, <laughs> I did the DNA test, and I'm 37% Irish. Hey. That's my, that's my dominant. That, I need to do that. I really want to do that. I'm a mutt, really. I mean, people Me like, oh, I'm Irish. No, you're not. <laughs> you are like some Irish and the rest of, I have like, I even have Indian from India. Oh, cool. Like, like 1%, which is crazy. It's fun to find that stuff out. It is. I, think, it's, it's I find fun. it fascinating. Uh, so background, growing up, uh, d- d- were you like kind of the, the class, cl- not class clown, but the, you know, dr- dr- dramatic and... You know, doing plays and at home and, you know. Actually, Tony. Tell uh, me about in it. In eighth yeah. grade. Eighth grade. I won best all around <sighs> in my yearbook. For? You no, know, just best all around. Wow. That, that was the title. That was literally the I title. I thought you were going to all around something, no, but just, just all around. Existence. I Mine was get around. <laughs> mine was the best get around. So, <laughs> that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so I peaked in eighth grade. Yeah, right, um, right. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah. Uh, so, <laughs> from, from, so growing up, minister, teachers, um, w- was your family very supportive of you getting into the arts? They were. My family was always super supportive mm-hmm. without being, without pressuring me without without being crazy stage I can friends. hear the accent without. I know it's actually a Boston accent yeah. but now that I've gone up to Canada it's also it a Canadian, Canadian accent it's coming out, out. more <laughs> and more the oot I don't even hear it anymore but no you don't I'm going like full Canadian so they so they supported you mm-hmm. and uh, when was your first I guess play or theater or anything acting yeah well I did a little bit of like kid modeling back in Boston I can see that look how pretty you are <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so funny. And then when I was nine, I went to a Britney Spears concert. Hello. Of course. And I uh, I saw an ad for acting classes, and I started taking acting classes. Oh, wow. And then I went to a convention in L.A. a year later. I got an agent manager. And then I did my first job was on Mad TV. When Mad I was TV? 11. Really? What did you do for Mad TV? Uh, it, was a, it was a seventh heaven skit. Oh, how funny. And I was the littlest daughter, and I had no idea why half of the show was funny. I know now, but at yeah, the but time... Yeah, at the time, you are like, okay. went right okay. over my head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, so you actually didn't take you that long to get... How, how, how long did it take you no, once it, you were here? You're right. No, I was really fortunate. I moved here in, I think, about July, mm-hmm. uh, end of July, and then I got that job in October. Wow. So I was really, really fortunate. That was pretty quick. Yeah. Because you hear people all the time. I've been here 15 years and yeah. I still can't find a job. It's and they're doing free plays all the time. There. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So I definitely count my blessings. And so, what did you, what was it about acting that you fell in love with? Uh, the storytelling, for sure. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, I always love the storytelling. I love pretending to be other things. And mm -hmm. I just like, like, I, you know, I grew up loving going to Disney World and looking at the facades there. Right. And I just like the idea of being in something fake, but like based on something <laughs> right, real and right, something right. like fully immersive. And I, I guess I just like immersing myself in a completely different world. Wow, that's pretty. Now, uh, I'm very comfortable with, well, sometimes, with being <laughs> me. I, it's sometimes when I remember when I tried to do a little acting years ago, it was very uncomfortable me, for me to actually be somebody else. Oh, interesting. Where a lot of people find, like yourself, probably it's easier for you to just be somebody else. Yeah, I think the easier roles for me are the ones that are more different from me. Like mm. the real terrible people. I guess I'm claiming I'm a good person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm a should great we ask person. around the room? <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask my little brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was the little brother, so. Oh, so you understand. And they were, they were, oh, I mean, that's the wrong word to say on here. <laughs> no, but. I was a good big sister. Okay, Aww. Most of the time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I know, it's more fun. I mean, it's more, yeah, it's easier to play like the real departures from me, I think. You, you think. <laughs> well, I, but no, I think it's fascinating really to be able to, to get into that mindset of being someone else. Like, because I guess we all, we have characteristics about, whoever you play absolutely in us absolutely i mean it's just we choose to be we good choose, people exactly. we choose to be morals and values and sometimes you know there are people that have less yeah so, exactly right and so we when we finally have a character that we play or you play i'm sure it, it's fun to not be you for a minute totally it's fun to take yeah. that like little slice of my personality and then make that become the all-encompassing version of me right when i'm on set so when you got your first job at Mad TV and then you moved on from there, did, what was your main focus? Were you, I'm, I'm going to do television. I want to be, you know, in films. I want to be commercial. I mean, what what was your make or just any? Really just any. I mean, I guess my focus was films for mm -hmm. a while, but God, television is just so, so good these days mm -hmm. that I, I, I've just fallen in love with both. Right. What you What's know? what's it about TV now? that's really more appealing. I feel like, t I mean, TV, there's always been great TV, obviously. Right. But I feel like there's more of it now, and I think part of it's because there's there's so much, there's cable channels, and there's all these outlets. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just like a few channels, so even more people have voices now to put right. their stories, so it's becoming even more personal. And f television shows feel like little films now. That, that is true. It's awesome. That is true. I mean, if, I mean just... Look at Netflix of what yes. they've done. Yeah, I mean, because the a lot of Netflix stuff, which is now their office is just like a block away from yeah, here. Yeah, that's I pretty saw awesome, that. right? Uh, but it's very movie. I mean, mm -hmm. the production value has went way up. It really has. I think it's really put the pressure on everybody else to right because then it up everyone else is like, oh man, yeah. we got to really yeah. bring our A game. Now, is there a, is there a role that that even though you say you 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 like to play other characters is there a role that makes you uncomfortable or that you would say i'm not really wanting to go hmm. that role that makes me really uncomfortable man actually no one's ever asked me that that's a good that's thing. a good question yeah, i like it thing. i like yeah. new yeah okay. um man i actually think a role that would make me really uncomfortable i'd probably like even more it's <laughs> really fun to delve <laughs> to into push. the really effed yeah. up like yeah. <laughs> really psychotic stuff yeah i think i'd probably like the yeah. that even more <laughs> if, I, it just popped in my head the Sharon. Remember Sharon Stone mm -hmm. when she oh. that one role? I can't remember that role. You know where was it? Fatal Attraction. Yes. <laughs> I mean, because that that's that's pretty deep and dark. Uh, yeah, I guess there's certain like nudity things I might not be comfortable with, but in terms of uh, content, right. for me, as as long as the content isn't like gratuitous, and gratuitous and like sexist and right. I if it has a points you know mm -hmm. if it has a redemptive value if it's but you know like it de definitely depends on the context a hundred percent and i think that's you know a lot of the times in the period pieces where you know a lot of african americans or even women that 100 years ago yeah. or 80 years ago then they and they're playing characters that now they're seeing they're, they're not only watching it on television but they're actually playing characters that are being yeah. you know from slavery to you mm -hmm. know sexism and stuff like that i think that would be uncomfortable but yet eye-opening 
I completely agree. Yeah, I definitely think there's a difference between honoring something from way in the because I think covering up what happened in the past, right, and sugarcoating it would not be honoring it. So to you know bring it into the world in an mm -hmm. honest way, but then helps us move forward and past that is really yeah. important. Uncomfortable, like reliving those. Oh my God, I can't. I've never really had a role exactly like that, but I would imagine you will. so absolutely. I'd love to because I love period pieces. But it would be super uncomfortable, but really important. And mm. honoring it back then, I think, would be different than doing something similar like in modern times. I don't know. I haven't fully thought that one out. But I, I do know, think but it, it, yeah, know. I think that's great. I mean, I really, I love period pieces. Yeah, I, that's probably m one of my favorites. Me of, too. You know, either documentaries of history or mm. period pieces. Yeah, and yeah, fascinating. Is there a, is there somebody that you would look back in history that you would, you would want to play? Yeah, um, Disney princesses, even though they're not real. <laughs> and they're, in my heart, they're real, though. So yeah, they that are. Counts. Don't tell her. Don't tell her. Yeah. <laughs> God, I mean, I'd love to play, I mean, obviously, like Joan of Arc or some, oh, that'd be great. some incredible I heroic woman. Yeah. Um, yeah, God, there's a lot out there. I do like westerns too. I'd love to play some like badass oh, chick be from fun. the old west. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I could see you do that. I could see you. <laughs> um, are you now? There's there's dramatic actors and there's comedic actors. What what do you consider yourself? And and if if you're not a comedic actor, is it easy for you to be easy for you to be co uh, comedic or co funny in a in a role? Because I, I think that's hard just to be funny. Be funny. And yeah, it's, like, it's not that easy. Yeah, I think it, it, at least watching actors that I love and respect, I think the really brilliant comedians and comic mm -hmm. actors. Um, they are able to tap into this very deep, dark place in themselves, and mm -hmm. that's part of the reason why they're so funny. So I think it's easier, not easier, but I think there it makes sense to transfer into the dramatic world. Right. But it right. is a different thing being dramatic and going into comedy. I don't know. I love both. It's so hard. <laughs> I love crying and being, you I know, can't. captured and freaking out, which has happened to me so many times in so many roles. <laughs> but I also love just being fun and funny. Yeah. So I don't know. It's hard for me to say. Yeah, I think think it, it, there's people that are naturally funny because yeah. I have a friend that he's so hilarious but again if you say be funny yeah he you're, he's just like uh, 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 right it's yeah. a different thing when you're like on the spot yeah I mean that's like Robin Williams I couldn't imagine being around him yeah. I mean I would love to have been yeah. but to uh, just to be around him because he was constant I've heard my friends friends of mine that had worked with him that, and were friends of him said oh, wow. that he was just like that all the time. Like always on. Always on. It must have been exhausting. Whew. For him, and, um, well, for him, apparently not, but everybody else, I'm sure it would. Yeah, yeah. No, he's so brilliant. Speak, you know, speaking of, you know, like Robin Williams type of people, have you worked with people that you never thought you would have worked with yet uh, or worked with? Uh, or when you worked with them, you said, wow, I've learned so much from them. Any any yeah. cast that, uh, that would like that for well, you? Well, speaking of comedians, actually, uh, working with Ray Romano was oh God, a love. really amazing experience. And yeah. he is, oh my gosh, he is just how you'd want him to be. He's so kind and like naturally really? funny and down to earth. And it's funny because actually the studio that we're at now, mm -hmm. our production office for Men of a Certain Age, the TNT show right. where I played his daughter, um, we the production office for the pilot was actually in this studio in this building. Really? And then we That's went over great. to Paramount when we got picked up. But I, I was like, hey, old time. I've been here. Yeah, I've been here before. <laughs> but yeah, Ray was amazing because he's one of those actors that you always see him in comedies, but there's always like this darker side to it, this really right. like truthful, heartbreaking side. Mm -hmm. And he brought that so well into Men of a Certain Age. Um, and man, yeah. he was like yeah. so heartbreaking and, and amazing on that show. And just oh, like seeing great. him work and seeing him just truly bring like his soul to his work in the most effortless way. Obviously right. it's hard, but he made it look effortless. It was oh, a I really good learning experience. Yeah. Now I think there's, a, you know, like singers, there's singers that you would hear them sing. And you're like, oh, uh, their influence is Christina Aguilera. Yeah. Oh, that's Whitney Houston or whatever. Do you, do you take away or have you taken anything away of someone like Ray? Uh, yeah, that, like that you are noticing in your own acting now. God, I try. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a big thing to claim. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I'd like to think I'm an amalgamation of myself and my favorite actors that I've either watched or right. had the pleasure yeah. of of working with. It's hard though. Yeah. No. Sometimes sure. I'll, I'll watch like I mean Meryl Streep's my favorite actress oh, because obviously everybody says that. Yeah, I know it's everybody. it's so typical, but deal with it. I know, I right? Love her. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> She's such a has been. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> and so like I'll just watch my favorite actors and like hope that they'll brush off on me right one like, percent and it would be amazing <laughs> well I, one reason you're here because we want to talk about Finn yay Finn uh, come on so tell us <laughs> about the character on Magicians so tell us about Finn and and, and what what what's the character because there's maybe a lot of people that have not seen the yeah. Magicians so yeah, yeah, I mean, I love fun. Um, so on the magicians, you know, it's these college age kids that, that can do magic. They're magicians mm -hmm. and they find out that the uh, fairy tale world they read about as children is actually real. Um, and that's called Fillory. So it's they not real? <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter's not real? I know. Oh, it's <laughs> amazing. It's like that. It's like yeah. if Harry Hogwarts was real. So they find out it's real. They go to Fillory, the magical world. Mm -hmm. And I live there and um, I am uh, the daughter of a knife maker. And mm. one of the characters, Elliot Waugh, um, played by the amazing Hale Appleman, he marries my character, Fen, and becomes High King. Oh, well, excuse me? Yeah, so I get to wear princess dresses oh. all the time and so hang you out with princess. Cat. Yeah, I know. It, yeah. Oh, you mean on the show? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, it's cool. We get to hang out in a castle all day. And so Fen is this very conflicted character because in season two, like Elliot in the show is is gay, and we have an arranged marriage, mm. and it's it's tumultuous, but we also have this respect for each other, and it's very complicated. And then I end up getting kidnapped by fairies, and I, I'm pregnant with Elliot's baby, and then I give birth in the fairy realm. Um, oh wow! It's a pretty. Pretty That's traumatic pretty, time yeah. for fun. And then yeah. I come back to Fillory, um, a few less toes than before. I have to <laughs> trade them to come back. I have to trade my toes. Yeah. So it's rough. So yeah. we don't know where my baby yeah. is. I am in a burlap sack at the end of season two. And it's, yeah, it's pretty crazy for fun. And then Fen goes on this whole adventure in season three. And it was so, it's so fun to play. So when you first got the, the role... Mm -hmm. What was what was your thoughts of how am I going to play this role? What was what was going through your head? Yeah, I was I was really excited. Um, I was with some friends at the time, and I walked back in and I said, "I'm going to be a princess." <laughs> and then I told them that I was talking yeah, like, about yeah, a TV yeah, show. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, "Yeah, it makes sense." <laughs> um, well, you know, it's the biggest thing that I thought about because I obviously I didn't know Fen's storyline was going to become this huge traumatic thing. And Fillory is archaic in some ways. Right. And so one of the first things I thought going into the project was um, playing a woman in a time where women don't have as much of a voice. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously there's stuff going on now, but it's a very archaic society. And so I, I was trying to figure out how that would affect <laughs> me and how I would act, even how I would talk. And I think my cadence on the show might be a little bit different than in, than in regular life. Huh. And, um, but then with all this stuff, I've just been like, oh man, like studying about PTSD and trauma and all this really deep, dark stuff. But we have wow. such amazing writers and producers that yeah. like, they talk me through it and we talk and I even talked to my therapist about it. Uh, really? Yeah. We like talk. Like, like I, 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 can't, I can't, <laughs> she's. Yeah, she's it's like enough about Brittany. She's a princess, but I have to wear a burlap sack. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I think, you know, that's fascinating. And I, I love to see uh, the evolution of characters. Uh, I mean, like, just going back to, like, Urkel. A lot of yeah. times when characters start, you don't know where they're going to end mm -hmm. up going. Where do you see your character going as as it continues to grow in, in this, uh, in this uh, show? Yeah, she's definitely, um, I know it sounds so cheesy, but it's true. She's definitely finding her own own voice in oh. so many. Yeah, and I even sang last <laughs> Do you really? season. Right. Yeah, we had a musical wow. episode. Go ahead. I'll put a little re reverb on if you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it always sounds better with reverb. Right. Um, but yeah, no, uh, Fen definitely uh, starts doing things for herself, I would say. Um, because she's always been there, like Fillory has her first love, mm -hmm. and her family is al is also her love, and it's still all of these things still are. But uh, Fen starts turning a little bit inwards and figuring stuff out without giving anything away. And I think that's a good role model for absolutely uh, young women and yeah. girls. I've started to look up to her more and more. I've grown yeah. so attached to her; it's just ridiculous. But yeah, and, and uh, it, what's funny? We have uh, you ever heard heard of the movie Craft? Craft? Yeah. I don't know. 
if I oh have. Oh my god, have you seen Craft? What's Cra- wrong with me? Well, this is it might be some it was about, it's about witches. But oh, it was the in, craft. The craft. Yes, 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 yes I've so seen that. So one of the uh, Rachel True, one of the characters is has a show here. Oh, cool. Yeah, she so but it's it's funny kind of reminds me of that because, you know, that witchcraft and totally. and then it becomes like actually true. So Yeah. Um yep. I could see this as a movie almost too. Oh have yeah. They, have they ever thought about making this into a movie? I don't know. I haven't heard anything about that because it's based on a book series. Yeah. It's based on a trilogy of books. Yeah. Um. It's, I don't it know does if they sound ever. Like a movie. Yeah. Right. I, I. I. don't know if they ever originally thought about that and then decided to go with the show route because there's right. so much, um, so much there in the mm-hmm. books. But hey, Lord of the Rings pulled it off in movies. R- right. So I guess if Lord of the Rings can well, do Twilight, it. Well, Twilight. I mean, it's yeah. very. You know. It's definitely doable. Yeah. But. Um. Now, magicians. The magicians. So. Have you ever, have you ever, I know it's not like, you know, the card tricks and stuff like that, but did (laughs) did you ever play with any of, you know, magic tricks and stuff like that? Yeah, I think I had a little magic trick kit when I was a kid. Did you really? I think I did. Uh I think I had like a spy kit and a magic kit. Um, <laughs> Spy. That's a combination. It could, it could go together. Yeah. I, and I love James Bond now, so it like it makes sense. Yeah, I had like the glasses that had mirrors on the side that were <laughs> super inconspicuous. I yeah, thought at nine nobody years old. noticed. <laughs> I don't, what I was looking out for at nine years old, I have no idea. <laughs> but I also did have a magic kit. Yeah, but I've always loved magic and in fantasy, mm. and uh, I used to like say to my stuffed animals at night. When I was very young, not recent, I would say, Bunny, that's my favorite stuffed animal, Bunny. I said, if you are real, you can move. You can tell me. Just do it slowly so you don't scare me. Right. That's kind of magical, right? She <laughs> sits up. Well, let me tell you. And you're like, just like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> you're, he's been spoken yeah. for a hundred yeah. years yeah, right. somehow. I, I'm, I was kidding. <laughs> Stop to do that. Yeah. Bunny's not real, by the way. Yeah. I tried. A re- are you sure? Yeah, he's well. Hey, maybe maybe it's like when Toy you Story, turn around, you never, you never know what goes on behind your back. That's the thing. That's why I tested it. Mm-hmm. I also mm-hmm. used to try to fly. I want to fly on my show so bad. That's my goal in life: is to fly in a production. That would be. Do you have dreams about flying? Oh, all still the time. all the time. Yeah. You know, they mean like your your soul's leaving your body to do traveling. Do you know? That? Oh, really? Yeah. I hope it's doing good things. No, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Not it's like a fight club thing where I'm going to like right. killing people or, you know. Right, right. <laughs> Have you ever had the one where it's like you you start flying and then you start like falling and then you like start flapping your wings? Or is uh, that just me? I always, no, I always wake up if I fall. <laughs> You wake up if you you don't hit the ground. I never I've never hit the ground yeah. in a dream. I've heard that's bad, but well, obviously yeah. you're still here. Yeah, I, I've never. <laughs> not, I don't think I've ever hit the ground either. Now you're doubting always, yourself. I know, Maybe you now have I'm hit thinking the ground. About, well, I've, had, okay, I've had a little more years on you, so <laughs> there's a lot of things to remember. Uh, so, so tell me about uh, uh, being an actress is one thing. Do you uh, in this day and age? Even when you're not working, you can do so much now with you know internet and yeah. And, you know, FaceTime and or live, live Facebook Live and all this stuff. Have you ever thought about writing or directing or producing or? Yeah, or? I really, I really want to write and produce. And I've been writing poetry since I was like eight. Really? So yeah. you songwrite too? Or I, I haven't really done any songwriting. Um, poetry's a form of that. So. I should. Yeah, I know. Seriously. Yeah. So I've done that. One of my first poems was about a pickle. The other one was about <laughs> a dictionary. Dill or. Oh, that's a good question. I didn't sweet specify. Okay. I do like both, though. I do, too. My boyfriend would hate me for saying that. <laughs> right. He says the sweet kind is not even a pickle. That is. I love sweet pickles. Thank You hear that, James? Yeah. Sweet <laughs> pickles. My first last name is Sweet, so sweet pickles. Hey, of course. Yep. It's like a personal salt that's on you right. and your right. kind. Oh, um, Lord. Um, so, <laughs> so writing poetry. I actually wrote poetry growing up. I had oh, you did? A couple when I was a kid pu- published. Yep. Hey, that's yep. awesome. It's really hard to it, get published. It, well, back then, it was much, I think it was much easier. <laughs> I'm sure it was still pretty. But what, what's, what do you write about? Personal experiences um, or... Yeah, God, what do I write about? I write about, like, traveling. I write about, like, I love Thoreau and Emerson and all those people, so I write about, like, nature stuff a lot. And um, I don't know. What do I write about? I write about I'm everything. Knowing. I'm asking you. I, I like writing limericks. <laughs> limericks, really? I love lim- Speaking of being Irish, yeah. yeah. I like limericks a lot. They're, like, fun little, fun little rhymey things. Yeah, um, I love this stuff. And I did some wine writing too. What's wine writing? So I would like, like interview. Drunk and wa- yeah, oh, so when I, drunk, yeah, 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 I'm drinking wine. And I so just it's <laughs> wine writing. Yeah, right. No, I would interview winemakers drunk. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that part I did sober. 
Um, but yeah, I know. I definitely love to write. I'd love to. And I started doing screen, screenwriting too recently. Not really? professionally yet, but hopefully. It's You have to start somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So what do you, I see you, you work with, uh, you know, with like L.A. Children's Hospital, mm-hmm. Boston Children's. What, why, why, uh, why giving back? Why, why are you giving back to people? I think it's amazing when people do that, when they finally yeah. get some success. But why, why, and why these organizations? Uh, God, well, I couldn't imagine not, not giving back. Um, I, God, like we're, we're put here on this earth and we have all these ambitions for ourselves mm-hmm. and we do all these things. And it, I don't know, I just like would feel wrong not to do something good for, for other people. Right. And, um, I, yeah, I, I, children's hospitals are really close to my heart, um, because I love kids and oh, you do? Yeah, yeah. And it's sad to see, like, it's wrong that children have to go through such, I mean, it's wrong that adults have to go through such terrible things. Right. And um, and I've like I've done some stuff in the past with children's hospitals and connected with some of the patients. Even one of the patients um, I stayed friends with over over all these years, and she's actually a nurse now too in oh, really? Boston. Yeah, I met her when she was a patient, um, Julianne, and I'm friends with her now. And she became a nurse a couple years ago. That's great. It's really yeah. I met her like ten years ago, so it was really nice to see that. Um, and and yeah, and I also. Uh, organ transplantation is really important to me because my boyfriend got a heart transplant. Wow! Um, three weeks after we started dating. I thought you were gonna say three weeks ago. No, no, like, no. Oh I would probably I like, you... go <laughs> hang yeah. out with him in the yeah, hospital. Yeah, be like, why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> eh, he's fine. He's got a new heart. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Um, but yeah, no, that was four and a half years ago. And wow, was it a? Uh, if I may ask, was it like a disease? Or no, it's like fine. No, he. Disease? It's coming back to the children's hospital thing. He had uh-huh. cancer when he was five. Wow. And just wow. hearing the stories about that is just yeah. so devastating. Um, and hearing a kid going through it, and then that just learned that led to other things. And then he got a transplant in his early 30s, and um, just seeing him go through that. And the sad thing is, like, so few people are organ donors, and yeah. there's no reason not to be. Like every religious, um, big religious, uh, everywhere. God, that sounded that was such a dumb that sentence. That was wonderful. All <laughs> religions. <laughs> I have a degree in literature, for God's sake. I can talk. Remind me not to have her edit my papers. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> rewind, start yeah, right. over. <laughs> so all major religions say that it is okay to donate organs. It doesn't hurt your chances of being saved if you are the person who will be the organ donor. What I'm saying is there's no reason not to be an organ donor. Right. And if more people just signed up as own organ donors, then thousands and thousands of people oh, um, yeah, of wouldn't course. be dying. So yeah, I'm going to start something, a foundation you, are for, you really? for organ um, donation. Yeah. Wow, look yeah. at you. Yeah, it's really important to me. And I was like, why not Why not try to help on my little part of the world? So, Well, I, th- you know, I think, I think you're refreshing for oh. Hollywood because, Thanks. and I've interviewed a lot of people, and I'm not, majority of people are amazing. I mean, Aren't nice, I wonderful? But you I are. I was thinking the same thing. Like, you have a great <laughs> spirit kidding. about you. You feel like an old soul. Aw, and, thanks. Uh, yeah. I'm like, really enjoying chatting with you. Me too. Oh, you're we're like on? really good at this I interview stuff. We're just talking to each other. <laughs> Uh, no, I really, this is why I just love to get to know each other. Uh, you know, people I interview just because it's a lot of interviews you hear about, oh, okay, the show, and da, da, da. but yeah. I think knowing the person describes the characters even better. That, I, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. Mm-hmm. Well, I, before we get out of here, I want to know, is there any other projects coming up? Because I know you're a busy woman and I've looked at your, you know, IMDb. resume, <laughs> you have a lot. So... What's coming up? Yeah, I have this film coming out. Well, this film came out um, in limited release uh, this month called The Man from Earth, Holocene. Oh, it's, what is that about? Yeah, it's uh, it's about this man who is 14,000 years old. And wow, he has okay. just gone through life like every 10 years moving on so nobody will catch on. And he's a professor at a university and I'm one of his students. Oh, really? Yeah. And you caught on. And I caught on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> right. Um, and it was a film that actually came out 10 years ago called The Man from Earth that was like this this cult sci- science fiction hit. Mm-hmm. And so they just did the new film uh, last year. So that's in limited release. And it's coming out, uh, I think, in January. And uh, I have this other film captured coming out next year, too, but I'm not sure. Independent film? Or? That's an independent yeah. horror film. I'm like a punk Ooh, rock star. I have film. full chest, chest tattoos. I thought you were going to say full chest hair. I was like... <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm like, that was a horror in itself. <laughs> yeah, that was the whole plot. It's just how. Yeah, it's like, oh my God. Um, <laughs> no, actually, horror films, even independent films, can become co- like cult classics. Yeah. And yeah, that's a huge industry. Yeah, I mean, yeah. man, you can make some films have been like, what, like $10,000 budgets and then oh, yeah. just exploded. Obviously, that's not the norm. Right, but right. Look, it's I, nice like that Blair that can Witch, help. Remember yeah. that? That was the low budget. Yeah, it's nice seeing like, li- like yeah. new indie filmmakers coming in and just making a passion project and it stuff. blowing up. I love it. Yeah, it's hard to, it, for me, I'm very picky about horror films because I, yeah. It, yeah. I still, I'm a, I'm a, the old school, you know, oh, Frankenstein. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I'm reading Dracula right now. Are Speaking you reading of, Dracula? Yeah, I'm like 100 pages in right now. Wow. It's, I like the old school like Brum? horror too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really good book. Ah, I love it. <laughs> All right, where people where do people follow you, find you? I, I I've seen your social media. It didn't like you need my help to <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll take all the help I can yeah. get. Um, uh, yeah, I'm on Instagram, um, official Brittany Curran, and then Brittany Curran on um, Twitter and Twi- uh. Facebook. Twi- uh. And <laughs> on Snapchat, I think I'm I'm Brit Kerr. I don't even know. Do you use that? I do use it. Really? I just, I've been using it. Yeah, it's like, it's I fun. Tried. I don't use it as much, though. I d- first, I don't get it. <laughs> I mean, I, I've tried. I've, I'm like, I just don't. It's like seven seconds. Is it seven second videos? Tense? Oh, ten. Ooh. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Those three extra seconds. Three more seconds. I just don't want you can get in ten seconds. Hey, it's blah, 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 not blah, blah, about the time, reader. Tony. It's, it's about the content. You... Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 That's why I'm almost fifty, and I just I'm not, yeah. You young. I think so. you're hip. <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Well, we thank you guys, and uh, please uh, watch uh, on Sci Fi Channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, the magicians, and uh, I think uh, this is uh, uh, just a star for you. I, I definitely see you winning major awards, and oh. I'm not even a psychic. I kind of am, but um, <laughs> yeah, I love it. I know, but uh, we want to thank everybody for joining us uh, on Ever <laughs> on Ever Tony Sweet. And I have to say, this week you're celebrating with me, November 14 in 2008 uh-huh. is when I started this show. Oh my gosh! So is that today? Nine today, right? yesterday. Yesterday. But nine years is ah, on Ever Twenty Sweets. Congratulations! Thank you. Hey, nine. that's awesome. Yeah, almost a thousand shows. Whoa! What an accomplishment! I know. That's so cool. I won't tell you what number you are, but because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but thank you for being on the show. We really appreciate you. You're going to come back, and maybe we'll, she'll co-host with me because I love her. I know. Yeah. I love him. And then I'm we're, like a big Tony Sweet fan now. And, and then we're going to share a cookie. Yes. Can we? Yes. Okay, good. And you're going to eat most of it because I'm really trying to lose I weight. mean, if you insist, I'll eat most yes, of it. Yes, you will. <laughs> All right, we're out. Talk to you later. Bye. This has been On Air with Tony Sweet. Don't worry. There's more online. Search On Air with Tony Sweet on iTunes for fast shows and exclusive behind-the-scenes content. On Air with Tony Sweet every Wednesday and Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific. Right here on UBNRadio.com.